Hey friends, what happens the second a doctor gets it? That fungus and yeast really is a major cause of a lot of what they're seeing in their practice. Today, Dr. Soraya joins us toward the middle of the show. He's a doctor who came to one of my lectures a year ago and now totally gets it. That's exciting. Chris Chase is gonna open today talking about did you know there was chemical pneumonia? I had no idea, but chemicals can induce pneumonia. Well, we get into those chemicals sometimes in our house. So we'll talk about the Pioneer. Then Susie Cohen is gonna be here. All that, and I assure you, get ready, get your ears ready. Today is going to be a mind blower of a show for you. All that on Know the Cause. Today's Know the Cause is brought to you by Pioneer, better air for your home. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. Hey folks, uh, Chris Chase is with me here, the pioneer. That's all I gotta say. His company is HealthQuest Technology. Maybe it was 20 years ago, both of us, full head of dark hair, <laughs> sat down and we began lot talking. Thinner. <laughs> yeah, a lot thinner. <laughs> but Chris did something unique. He was in an entirely different field, retired young, and someone came to his house and said, you know, I want you to take a look at this technology. Would you be an interested investor? I'm gonna tell a story, Chris. He's got a moldy basement. You go through his basement into his garage, so he you know, takes the guys to dinner, they come home, and he goes, okay, I'll please these guys and plug it in. So he's leaving for work the next morning, goes through that moldy space and goes, that's weird, it doesn't smell anymore. So that was one thing. Then he unloads his pocket with some doctors to figure out if this really works in the real world, not in his basement or his garage, but in a real home. And so they had six homes that they studied. Long way of saying he did his due diligence, right? He vetted this equipment and the uh, technology. And what he found was that it would cure in the air particulates. I said the C word, I can say cure on TV. It cured the home of particulate. It cured it of chemicals. It cured it of antigens uh, like ragweed and cat dander. And along comes this new report from Medline that says chemical pneumonia. I knew there was bacterial. I knew there was fungal. There's chemical pneumonia from all the chemicals in our environment. Could a, a device like the Pioneer help with that, Chris? A device like the Pioneer wouldn't, but the Pioneer can. Um, you know, the, the, the chemicals the odors associated with a chemical is actually a molecule, and that molecule, can, de depending on the chemical or the, the smell that, 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 that you perceive, is made up of different base elements, sulfur, chlorine, hydrogen, sodium, you mm -hmm. know, whatever. What this technology does is, is that chemical molecule has a positive charge to it. The negative charge technology that, that is pulled out of this unit attaches to that positively charged chemical molecule and when it does it when it does that it breaks it down to the base element so you're not masking an odor you're actually eliminating the odor that's are, how the technology are we talking works. about bleach in your home and chemicals that you use ammonia. to dust ammonia things of that sort so we're not only looking at cat and dog dander and ragweed or you know pigweed that we'll pick up from outside but we're also talking about chemicals in that glue. home glue glue formaldehyde okay. from there you go that leaches out of your furniture and your carpets uh, you know the formaldehyde is used in in uh, uh, almost all uh, household products like carpeting drapes yep. Uh, laminated wood materials, that sort of thing. It's all got different forms of, of, of uh, uh, formaldehyde and, and in, in products like laminated wood, it takes years for all of that formaldehyde to leach out of the, out of the wood. So you're inhaling that literally for years, and formaldehyde. And that's what they used to use you know, to embalm, embalm people, people. With, you know, <laughs> you, you want to live with that? It's not, you die with it. Um, it's not 
just mold that can impregnate a home. It's chemicals, it's dander, <coughs> it's everything. And this technology is much different than any other technology. I like your response, by the way. A unit like the Pioneer won't, but ours will. You've been with this technology for what, 16, 17 years? 17, 17 years, so it was 2000 when you guys originally got in. Um, a lot of these units have sold. Chris, initially years ago when we first met, you were taking the phone calls, <laughs> and then Lisa, your dear wife, started taking the phone calls, but you've heard a lot of things from a lot of people. Have there been people that give units back another unit just for this one? I know you took trade-ins at one time of other units. I bet you've seen amazing things. Hey, we, we have, uh, and one of the things that's especially gratifying is, is almost all of our customers, you know, if they buy a unit, they come back and buy others. And <laughs> I was and, one of them. And the reason that they do is, is because they've seen the effect on their health. I mean, you spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a year on supplements and uh, clean water, clean, you know, bottled water and that sort of thing. This is an interesting fact for every dollar that Americans spend on treating the air that they breathe, they spend $60,000 on bottled water. So people are not cognizant yet, folks. We, we just don't know this yet. Um, we do because we watch Know the Cause, and we are Know the Cause. It's amazing to me how you don't want any chemical in any of your food. You don't want it to be genetically modified, and then you go home and you breathe mold and chemicals and formaldehyde in your home. Be a real health pro. Get the house cleaned also. I mean, my wife and I have picked up three of these. We get back, we'll continue our discussion with Chris Chase and talk a little bit about the technology. Are you hearing a fan? No. How would you like a nice nightlight? Right, right in the hallway, right in your bedroom. Okay, when we get back, we'll discuss that. Once they figured out what this technology would do, and it's a big word, it's called photocatalysis, um, they took it a step further. There is a unit you can buy, there's actually a, a lamp module that you can buy, that ha or I'm sorry, it is a unit that you can buy that has a smart point button on it. This smart point button is for people who suffer allergies, uh, and I know there are doctors now recommending the unit for their allergy patients. Tell us about the smart point versus just the standard unit. Well, the, the, the standard unit will treat all three major types of air pollutants, but for people that have allergies that are, that are driven by particulate like pet dander or pollen or pesticide or dust, uh, the smart point unit uses what we call a needle point ionizer. And what, what that does is, is it creates 32,000 negative ions per second. Mm. And the pollutants, the particulate pol pollutants, have a positive charge to it. And what that does is, is it pulls that negative, negatively charged technology out of the unit and a, and a attaches to the particulate and then it, another particulate will attach to it and pretty soon you get a glob that's big enough that gravity will take over and drop it out of the air that you're breathing. So you'll see more dust on horizontal surfaces which is easily cleaned up but you won't be inhaling it. That, the, the, the reason that we call it smart point is, is people, when the ionizers were first invented, people, you know, they they were supposed to have an ionizer of this size for an area that they were treating. Well, I said, well, if, it's, if, if this size is good, one twice as big will be better. And what happened is, is they reversed, polarized the walls in, in their home. And so the wall that has a negatively charged uh, to it was converted to a negatively charged 
uh, surface. And what that did is, is all of the pollutants, the dust and, and that sort of thing that has a positively charged, was pulled to, the, pulled to the wall and you created what we call a gray wall effect. Mm. So that, that's why ionizers came out of, went out of favor. What the smart point technology does is it measures the polarity in the area that it, the unit is being used in. And when it gets to neutral, even, it cuts off. But so it does that, you, that automatically. Right, so okay. that you don't, you don't get the drywall effect. See, so folks, don't believe that this is high-tech stuff because I'm a guy who still can't, you know, set my TV up when I buy it. You literally take this home and plug it in the wall. There's a cord here. And as you can see, you can shut it off. But why? I mean, we've gone away for a week and left it on. And when we come home, does everyone smell this freshness? I mean, is it just me or when someone walks into a room with one of these? Uh, I think most people notice that. I tell people, you know, they ask me all the time, you know, you know, do I let it run all the time or do I shut it off at night or whatever? I said, you just need to use it when you're breathing. <laughs> you know. <laughs> do you stop at night? It's, and folks, let me tell you the good news. There are lamp modules, I could pull this out, but one lamp module will cover 350 square feet, another one 750 square feet, and another one of them, the average size home. And I would recommend that you put this unit uh, in a bedroom where you sleep at night or in the bathroom, you know, uh, where you're in there, you know, a third of your life in the bedroom. So uh, let this unit run full time and in a year. Do you guys still let us know you always let Ruth and I know. So it's been 12, 13, 14 months, time to take this one out, throw it away, put a new one in, and there you go, quiet as quiet can be. We are spending huge amounts of money on organic food and supplements without any excipients or binders, on water, and yet we don't give any attention to air. Call our operators. They're trained to help you figure out what unit will be best for you you know, if you've got a cash flow problem, we're, we're happy to help you with that. We, we do interest okay. fee uh, three terms on, on, oh, great. on, on that. Um, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not absolutely 100% satisfied with this product, you can return it and get your money back. Um, but the ladies that answer the phone can help. They, they can answer just about any question you're going to ask them. And if they can't, I can't. they go to the boss. <laughs> Chris, thank you for coming in today and being with us. It's called The Pioneer. Thank you. So pharmacist Susie Cohen is here today to talk about malic acid. Among other things, it's a great antifungal. And after that, Dr. Mukesh Saraya gets it. This is an exciting time for Know the Cause. You're going to love this interview. Did you ever wonder why we here at Know the Cause love green apples and use that as our logo? It's the apple with the highest content of malic acid, a natural ingredient discovered way back in 1785. It makes green apples sour. When used as a dietary supplement, malic acid can re-energize muscle cells and reduce muscle aches. So if you have fibromyalgia, eating green apples or taking malic acid supplements can go a long way. Dr. Mukesh Saraya, you've seen him on this show before, folks. He's a doctor who gets it. He's board certified in internal medicine and pulmonology, sleep specialist, and so forth. So I have a question, yes. Dr. Saraya. You know CPAP machines, right? I hear this on TV all the time. Get your CPAP machine, they're now tiny. And you know, here's a patient laying in bed snoring at night and the wife or the husband is knowledge. How much of that, I wonder, is linked with the discovery here that fungus is growing rapidly through the alveoli, through, through the lungs? Uh, a significant uh, you know, number of patients have fun fungi. And you know, I, just to give you an example, we had a, a, a patient whose wife was in my, my office with her mother. And she was telling me her husband needs sinus surgery. He's 80 years old. His heart, heart problems, he's on Plavix. The cardiologist will not let him off the Plavix to do the surgery. So I said, here, here's a grapefruit, you know, nose spray. You know, try this out, and if it doesn't work, then go for the surgery. Two days later, she's in my office again telling me, and this time he's seeing me as a patient, and I've not even seen the patient before. So they, you know, 
amazing. Three days later, the, the sinuses that were full are now opened. See? And you know, grapefruit, of course, is antifungal. Antifungal, yeah, absolutely. So tell me, when you do a bronchoscopy, where you have a little thing, respiratory system here, where, where does that tube, it's no longer a thick stick, like when I was absolutely. in training, it's now a little bendy uh, yeah, fiber so the, optic. So the, the fiber optics are about, uh, about eight to 10 millimeter size, really di tiny. different you know, channels. So a patient is sedated, and basically what we do is we, this area is all numbed with, with, uh, with lidocaine, and we pass the scope that goes through the nose, in the back of the throat, through the vocal cords, going in. So this is a trachea, this is the right lung, this is the left lung. So the air that you're breathing in has to go through all this area, down, wow. down here. And then, you know, this is like an, an expansion here. But basically, when the air has to go through all this, before it goes to the alveoli, which is where the blood vessels go around, this is where you exchange the oxygen carbon dioxide. So what I do is when I go in through, and I'm looking at both lungs, so it basically... I would reach an area where the mucus plug is sitting there. Wow. And that plug of mucus can extend into all this different, like branching out into all this alveoli. So a little blockage here, you know, would, would, would block off about a, a third of the lung. Wow. And it, the, the irony is that this may not even show up on a chest X-ray. So X-rays could be read totally negative when you have a one third of your lung that is completely blocked off. These people are going to their doctor, not a doctor, they're going to doctor after doctor after doctor. Listen, I'm snoring, I can't breathe at night, my nose doesn't seem to work, I talk like this, and they call it a little sniffy allergy. Could be a real complex problem. I think very often it is. That's what I try and teach on Know the Cause. This was a real one of your patients. What are we looking at? So here, you know, this is looking through the scope, this on the right side. Okay. This white here is, is a plug of mucus that travels deep inside. So, you know, this would be equivalent of being somewhere over here. And this is so thick that when, when I kind of pull it up with, with, with my scope, it won't come through the suction channel. So I literally have to kind of take my scope out and then flush this out. Oof. So this here is a four by four. So that's, this, what, that's a white uh, gauze. There's a gauze, and, yeah. And so I kind of laid it out. That's on, what you pulled out? This is what I pulled out. Wow. And, and it is so thick and so gooey that it, it won't even suction. So any amount of coughing is not going to get this out. You know, yep, it's, it's literally right. very, very vicious. It's, it's very viscous. It's very thick. And, and it will take several of these attempts. And here's another plug that's kind of totally blocked off an air passage like this. So this here is another, another plug. So the same patient, you know, I'm, I'm literally going in. I'm, I'm pulling it out of the patient. I'm flushing it out through the, through the scope. And what that does is opens up this alveoli, you know, that, that we're not getting any air. So okay. what I see is a transformation on this patient that is not able to breathe or even walk to the bathroom. Okay, you know, now, without being sure of you've that. just diagnosed it. They've grown it out. It's cryptococcus or it's some kind of penicillium, some kind of a fungus. Do you start them empirically before you get the results back? No, on I, I wait on wait it till just, the, just get to the be sure. I'm almost certain by the time I've seen it that mm -hmm. it's going to be fungus. Okay. But it takes about four weeks for those cultures exactly. to come back. New In the meantime, what I'm doing now since yeah. I met you is I'm putting them on the diet. So How's that, that you know, so uh, amazing. So in fact, I'll tell you, uh, antifungal medication is extremely expensive. And, and while they're waiting for drug companies to, to approve you know, their medicine, they're going on the diet. By the time they get the medicine, I feel like they don't even need it. What percentage of people? Um, about 20, 20, 20 to 30% of the folks are doing better just on the diet alone. Wow. Thank you for your time. I'm, you know, it's funny. I worked clinically, as you know, for maybe 20 years. And it takes me a meeting like this to sit down with you to really understand how much fun it was clinically. I try and now teach a lot of people this, and with your help, it's really working. Thank you, Dr. Oh, thank Soraya. you, Doug. You bet. You know, this happened uh, 25, almost 30 years ago. I worked for a dermatologist, David Weekly. A yeah, graduate of Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, a very prominent dermatologist. He was responsible for removing me from Los Angeles and moving me and my family in 1986, 87, out to Dallas. And I worked in this huge dermatology clinic. Well, I was trying to teach Dr. Weekly that everything might be fungus. So I first showed him that in his psoriasis cases, and these people get steroids, use tar, you guys know if you have psoriasis, they stand in front of naked, in front of a puva box, right, to shoot uh, UV radiation through their skin and they do get better. 
bottom line is we had this gal come in, uh, a very nice lady, who had uh, psoriasis on her upper torso and her arms and so forth. And she also ha suffered from asthma. And when she talked to you, <laughs> hello, Doug. <laughs> Today I'm here for my, <laughs> you know, psoriasis treatment. And she, you could hear her whistle every time she talked, right? So I talked to Dr. Weekly and I said, look, she's been coming here for, what, seven years? I'm looking at her chart. Um, can we try something different? Would you mind if we tried maybe Spornox, an antifungal, a toenail drug, uh, on her? And she said she'll follow my diet. So Dr. Weekly said, well, what can I hurt? You know, let's go ahead and give it a try. Bottom line is, I asked her to come back in two weeks later, and she said, hello, Doug. Hello, Dr. Weekly. I've got a report. Look at how much better this is. And she rolls her sleeves up on this blouse. It was like 90% better. There was some scarring from old psoriasis. But folks, you could not believe how good her skin looked, right? And then I said to her, I notice you're not <laughs> wheezing. And she said, well, I think it's just coincidental, but for the past two weeks, I've been breathing wonderfully. Okay, do you think it's coinkadinky that Sporinox, a drug used to help her psoriasis, and all it is, according to the FDA, is a toenail fungus or a skin fungus drug, of course it helped with psoriasis if her psoriasis had a fungal root cause, and it did. But here comes a study this was three years ago. I wrote this up on my website, knowthecause.com. Nearly five million asthmatics worldwide could benefit from antifungal therapy, 2013. You know what the antifungal drug was? Spornox, the same one we put her on 25 years ago that not only relieved her skin condition, but also helped with her asthma. We know this because we followed up with her for months and months and months. And then Dr. Weekly, man, the seed was planted. Dr. Weekly started to put all these people that came in with concomitant problems, right? They'd see the skinologist on Thursday and on Friday, the lungologist, the asthma doctor. And he started to see that these patients who had skin problems, and it could be granuloma annulari, it could be seborrheic dermatitis, it could be any number of skin problems, but if they also had COPD or asthma or any breathing problem, he'd give them Spornox. And he'd say, you gotta follow Kaufman diet. I'm Doug Kaufman, the author of that diet. They'd follow my diet. Now, I had the opportunity many times to follow up with these people. I'd see them in the store. I relocated to Dallas. I'd see them in the store a few years later, and they'd all tell me, <clears throat> you know what, Doug? If I have a glass of wine, if I have a cupcake, if I go to a birthday party, I feel miserable if I eat that way. My <laughs> comes back. My breathing problems come back. And look, my skin gets bad too. But I know you told me, Doug, what you sold was a volume switch. You can turn your symptoms of psoriasis or asthma way up by having soda pop and alcohol and cupcakes and corn and yada, yada, yada. Or you can turn it way down, and I've noticed that to be true. Brand new article that just came out yesterday, Can Asthma Be Treated with Probiotics? They did a poor study. And they said in this, pragmatic trial may not be enough to determine the efficacy. They're gonna find it works, why? Probiotics, Dr. O'Hara's probiotics are antifungal. We now know that there's a fungal etiology, a fungal cause to many, many breathing problems. Try it at home. Change your diet, the Kaufman diet. Try antifungals, they have natural or prescriptive antifungals. Always share the feedback you get uh, from your family, your friends, et cetera with the doctor who's treating that for you. Hope that helps. There is that magnificent unit and there is the telephone number, folks. Please write it down, give them a buzz. I have several of these in my home. We literally can't believe it. If you have a pet at home, you're gonna want one of these Pioneers. I'd recommend if you only have one, put it in your bedroom. You spend a third of your life there, right? Uh, thank you, Susie Cohen, for coming in. Malic Acid, she is so knowledgeable. And Dr. Soraya. I gave a talk, I was a keynote speaker at the 8th Annual Health Fest out here in the Dallas area over the weekend, and Dr. Soraya showed up. And I said, would you take, I only have an hour to talk, would you take a few minutes? And he got up in front of that audience and he said, I think Doug's right. I didn't believe this a year ago, but I'm telling you there's something to this now. There are now a lot of doctors around America that are having to acknowledge that yeast, mold, mildew, and fungus, things that are remediated by the Pioneer, really do induce bad symptoms far beyond what the Center for Disease Control says, little itchy, little sniffles. 
I think mold and their mycotoxins can induce diabetes, cancer, and very serious diseases, and I've published to that effect. God bless you guys. Keep that in mind. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.